Hi guys, I'm Tika. Hi, my name is Doug. Tika, I'm gonna throw something at you to see what pops up into your mind. Ready? Okay. What do you think about when you hear the word fight? Fight against cancer, fight against mental illness, fight for your life. You know, when girls get all crazy and have a cat fight. And bullying. Okay, I really like how you use fight in a positive manner, like fighting against cancer. Okay, sure, but why are we talking about fighting? Good question. Well, today's big idea is how peace invites us to fight hatred with love. Watch this. Do you know why bee's hair is always sticky? Because it uses a honeycomb. Hey, I'm Michaela. It's nice to see you again. When I was in middle school, I had this really good friend who I'd known since grade three. Now, there was a point in my life where I was going through this struggle. I don't know, I wasn't really myself. I was really rude to this friend. I kept pushing her aside and I wasn't treating her like the friend she was. But even though I wasn't nice to her, she kept coming back. She was loving, she was kind, and she showed me that she was there for me. And today, we are really, really good friends. Over the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about the fruits of the Spirit and how being connected with the Holy Spirit allows these fruits to flourish. Now, you remember that these aren't real fruits like apples, grapes, strawberries. They're love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, and self-control. So we've talked about love and joy. And today we are going to be talking about peace. Now, this isn't just a passive sit back and watch type of peace. This is a creative, active peace, almost like a peace superhero. And that leads me to today's big idea, which is peace invites us to fight hatred with love. So we are going to be diving into God's story on the night that Jesus was betrayed by one of his disciples, his friend Judas. You see, Jesus knew that the religious leaders were not happy with him and that they wanted to kill him. So that night, Jesus was praying in the garden to God. He was asking God to help protect him, to make things not that scary. You see, even though Jesus is God, Jesus was still 100% human, meaning that the idea of dying and suffering was completely terrifying. After Jesus was done praying, he went over to his friends, the disciples. But at that moment, a large crowd led by Judas came and they were carrying clubs and swords. Judas went over to Jesus and greeted him and the crowd knew that that was who they were coming for. So they went and arrested Jesus. One of the disciples with Jesus didn't want him to be arrested. So he grabbed a sword and cut the ear off of one of the mobsmen. I mean, how gross was that? But Jesus didn't want this violence. He wanted peace. So let's see what Jesus says in Matthew 26, verse 52 to 54. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him. All who use the sword will die by the sword. Do you think I can ask my father for help? He would send an army of more than 70,000 angels right away. But then how would the scriptures come true? They say it must happen in this way. Jesus doesn't want violence. In fact, he stops the violence altogether. In another retelling of the story in another gospel, Jesus even heals the man's ear. I mean, talk about fighting hatred with love. And did you catch that? Jesus said, all who use the sword will die by the sword. I think sometimes we think that using violence will bring peace, but in fact, it is the complete opposite. It only hurts us. Then Jesus reminds his disciples about God's power. He says that he could have an army of 70,000 angels come, but he doesn't want that because God has a plan and Jesus wants to make sure that that plan comes true. You see, Jesus wasn't this guy who was trying to take over the government. He is the king of a kingdom, not of this world. He is the prince of peace, and we actually receive peace from him. Colossians 3.15 says, let the peace that Christ gives rule in your hearts. As parts of one body, you are appointed to live in peace. And Jesus' kind of peace invites us to fight hatred with love. So let's be creative and active peacemakers. Let's go out and spread the love and peace of God everywhere. That's it for me today. I'll see you next time. Turn to the person next to you and answer the following question before time runs out. Question time. 
What did Jesus say to his disciple in the God story? Why? Do you think there are more people who want to fight when they get upset? Or more people who want there to be peace? Why? Scrambled eggs. Can you say the key verse before the eggs unscramble? Get ready. Three, two, one, go! Say it with me. The Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians 5, verse 22 to 23. Whoa, it's crazy that Jesus just fixed the ear of someone who came to arrest him. Like, that's such an amazing way to show love. Absolutely, but to think that the Jewish leaders hated him so much that they still wanted to kill him. In circumstances where we get angry, people tend to lash out, but Jesus just showed us that we can use love to fight anger in such a peaceful way. For sure, and Linda actually just recently spoke to a few friends about how they've been bullied, or how they've handled bullying, um, or people who've actually helped people who have been bullied. Let's check it out now. Hey, I'm Linda, and it's great to hang out with you today. There is so much bullying going on in the world around us, but how should we as Jesus followers respond? I have a few friends who have unfortunately been bullied at some time in their life, so I talk to them about how they handled it, who or what helped, and what the outcome was. Let's check in with them now. I have been bullied a lot. Um, I always felt like a downer, I always felt like no one was there to help me. I always felt weak, useless, until my mom brought me here and I actually felt that love through my group. They have brought me back up to the highest where I felt love. I've been bullied a lot throughout my life in different situations. Uh, throughout time, it made me feel horrible, unworthy, self-conscious, and I started to care a lot about what people thought about me. I overcame it all through Jesus. Um, I just felt God telling me that these weren't the right friendships for me, the right relationships, uh, that I should just leave them, that it was all in His hands and just to let it be. And how do you feel about friendships now? Uh, in the near past, I felt as though I had a wall built up. I felt very self-aware about the friendships that I was walking into. But right now I have great friends and I've just felt that wall uh, tear down and I've become much more open around the people that I'm with. So throughout elementary school and the beginning of high school, I was bullied and I was almost a little bit too shy to talk about it and uh, to bring it up to my parents. But eventually I did mention it to a family friend and we ended up praying together and talking to God about it and it just made a world of difference. It helped me get it off my chest and I felt so much better. My friend, she was bullied and there were rumors going on about her. So I told the people that were uh, spreading rumors about her that it's not true and they're lies. And I just wanted to be with her and hang out with her more during the time she was being bullied. And what's the situation now? She moved to a new school and since we last talked, she hasn't been bullied and we still hang out today. Thanks for sharing. 
When I was bullied, it made me feel like I was worthless, that I wasn't loved, that I wasn't enough, that nobody cared for me. And one of the biggest ways that I overcame that was with my church and with my friends and going through the lens of how God sees me and how Jesus sees me. And being able to go through that, I realized that I was loved, that I was cared for, that I was enough and I was actually worth it. And so going through the lens of Jesus helped me love myself. When we follow Jesus, we're not guaranteed that bad stuff won't happen to us. But what we do know is that Jesus helps us fight hatred with love. First of all, I want to thank everyone who spoke up about being bullied. I know it's not easy, but together we can raise awareness and find a solution for this problem. Yes, and in this video we've seen with the support and acceptance, this can help people get through the difficult times. Absolutely. So let's fight hatred with love the way Jesus shows us to. And now let's get into our small groups and see how this looks like in our lives.